YouTubers. In the beginning segment of my HVAC duct booster part 2 video, I showed you where the EAC terminal is located on my furnace control module and what it looks like on a DMM when it switches on. In this video, I'll show you how I installed the HVAC duct booster control relay and how it works. I'm going to start with a demonstration for those of you who don't understand how a relay circuit works. Let's get to it. So what is a relay and how does it work? Well, a relay is a switch. And so, like a wall switch, there's a set of contacts inside that you open and close. The contacts make contact and they break contact when you actuate the switch. In a relay, it's the same idea. There are contacts, which hopefully you can see them down in there. This one has two sets of, actually four contacts, two pairs of contacts. When that contact pulls together, the circuit is closed and current flows through it. There's a wound coil here. It's a, wind, a copper winding, many, many turns of copper around a central core. And when that is energized, it becomes a magnet. That magnetism pulls that contact in. And then when the, when the uh, relay is de-energized, the spring on the top there opens the contact up. In the diagram, inside the dotted lines is the relay. This is the simplest form. It has a coil and one contact. In this case, NO, normally open contact. It could have multiple contacts, or it could have normally closed contacts, or it could have many combinations of normally open or normally closed contacts. But the way it's being used here, we're using the coil and one normally open contact. Now the way this works is when the 120 volt AC power source is turned on, current flows through the hot, through the coil, and back to the source. At that point the coil is energized, it's fully magnetized, and the force of that magnetism pulls the normally open contact into the closed position. The contacts are touching, so now there's current flowing through the contact, through the lamp, and back to the source. When the 120 volt source is turned off, the magnetism in the coil drops out, the contact is opened by spring tension, and there's no more current flow, so the light goes out. Now in this example, the power source for the lamp is the same power source as energizes the coil. But it's possible and it often happens that the coil and the contact have two separate power sources. And that's where a relay comes in handy because you might have a 24 volt control circuit where you have a 24 volt coil being energized but it's controlling a 120 volt power circuit. So a relay is used to take a signal from one source and convert it to a control of an output device. And they could be separate, and they could both be on separate power supplies. And that's the whole point of using this on the uh, HVAC booster blower. The furnace is going to turn on the coil, 
and then the 120 volt AC circuit is going to energize the motor. But for our purposes here of this diagram, I'm going to show you a demonstration using this relay on how this light circuit works. Here's my demonstration configuration. I have a power strip. When I turn the strip on, power goes through the white cord or tan cord to the relay socket. It's wired according to the diagram we looked at. When the relay is energized, power flows out through this orange and black cord and into the bit into the lamp. Okay, so now let's demonstrate it in action. When I turn the switch on, the relay is energized, power flows out through this cord, and the lamp lights up. When I turn the switch off, the relay drops out or opens up, and the cord is de energized. The lamp shuts off on off see if we can see it here do you see the contacts pulling in and dropping out in out that's all there is to it I ran the HVAC booster power circuit alongside the beam in the center of the cellar. That way I didn't have to drill through every floor joist. So these are little zip tie hangers that, I'm, that I put up screwed to that beam. not pulling them all the way tight yet because I want to be able to move the cable back and forth. I'm not sure if I have this, the length set correctly on the other side of the furnace where this cable drops down. So I'm going to run this cable all the way down to the joist where the HVAC duct booster is mounted. And I'm sure once you've seen this much, you've seen enough, so I'm not going to record the, this whole part. about even with that. So I'm fortunate enough to have a green leaf punch of the right size. Gonna go that way, maybe the other way. If I'm lucky.
clean hole. So this is how they work. The through bolt goes through that hole I drilled in the side of the cabinet. And then pulls the cutter right in. Here's the piece I removed. So that pulls right through and punches the hole out. Cut it down here, I'll have plenty of extra length. Here are a few words about my relay selection. I purchased this Omron MK2 PI general purpose relay because it was cheap and it appears to match all the electrical criteria I was looking for. However, I would need to install this relay in a separate enclosure on the side of the furnace because it's not plenum rated. That was going to add unnecessary cost and labor to the project. Meanwhile, I got some helpful comments on the previous video that caused me to reconsider what I was doing. One commenter suggested using the blower high speed signal to drive the duct booster, which seems like a good idea. But I'm thinking about adding a UV light to my air return. So I'd like to install a double pole relay that provides a spare contact I might use for that. Another commenter said he used a functional devices brand relay model RIBU1C to control his HVAC duct booster. That was a great share and led me to finding this functional devices relay RIB 2401D. Both of these relays appear to be good for this project. They have various coil voltages to choose from and their contacts are rated for motor control. Both of these models are plenum rated so they can be used in an air handling system. Both are UL listed. However, I selected the RIB 2401D because it has double pole contacts. The other relay would be fine if I only wanted one normally open contact, but I want two.
relay has arrived and it's time to get busy with uh, installing it. Okay. This thing comes with two long screws that you could use to to screw it to the cabinet on the inside somewhere if you wanted to. I don't want to. I think I can probably just stick it to the bottom with double sided tape and that'll be fine. It also comes with a half inch threaded nipple and lock ring for a standard uh, half inch knockout. So it could be sticking outside the outside of the box if someone wanted it to. I don't see any reason for that in this case. So the common wire, this is for the coil input now. The common wire is white and yellow and the 120 volt AC is white and black. So looking for white and yellow, well there's white and black. This looks like white and yellow here. Yep. White and yellow, white and black. So these go to my EAC output and neutral. So my neutral is here. So I got my EAC signal and neutral connected and they're tying to my output circuit. Which is gonna go feed my uh, my AC duct booster motor. It was one of these strain relief type bushings. Just putting this bushing in. It's not going to drip the conductors. going to protect them from these uh, metal edges. Hopefully it will fit. Should be a standard size hole. There we go. So, so far I've got the AC neutral supply, the AC ground from the supply, the 
where's the, the AC hot from the supply. And then I've got the neutral and the hot and ground for the furnace. Alright, so I need to bring in the neutral from the blower motor. I need a hot wire to go to the relay. You know, these are unused, except one of those is going to have some current on it because it goes to the uh, center tap on the coil so to, to work with 24 volts. So I'm going to have to wire nut that. 24 volt white and blue. Yellow is common. That should be hot right now. So blue should be hot. So here's a very important consideration that I missed when I was installing this wiring. This blue wire right now, everything's shut down. This blue wire, which is bare on the end, is hot. It's got 120 volts on it. The reason for that is that I tied the common on those contacts, the yellow wire, to the 120 volt feed that's always hot. And since the relay is not energized, the normally closed contact on the other side of that because hot is common, I screwed up. The output of that normally closed contact is hot. So here's the relay schematic I copied from the manufacturer's product cut sheet for this relay. Let's review what the hazards would be in miswiring this relay. On the left, we can see the coil and its wiring taps. On the right are the two poles of this relay. Here's pole one and pole two. 
We can see that each pole has a normally open and normally closed contact. And there are three wires coming out of the relay for each of the poles. Blue, yellow, orange, gray, purple, brown. Let's look at the coil connections first. We can see that the 120 volt AC control signal goes across the entire length of the coil from the white black hot wire to the white yellow common wire. We can also see that even as I'm not using the 24 volt white blue connection, if that conductor were to touch ground or some random exposed electrical contact or a person, the results could be very bad. Because there's current flowing from the hot side through the entire length of the coil and through here. There's an old saying that electrical current seeks the path of least resistance. Well, that's not really true. Electrical current takes every available path. Not just the path of least resistance. It takes every available path. So then you can see why it's important to protect the end of this wire that we're not using. So I'll put a wire nut on it and wrap it with electrical tape. That'll prevent it from becoming a problem. So now let's look at the uh, contact wiring. The way I originally wired this thing, I put my 120 volt hot source on the common and had it going across the contact out to the motor, as you can see here. Well, it turns out that's dangerous and I had to change it. Because when the relay is not energized, this contact's open so the motor stops, but this contact is normally closed so it's energized all the way through to the end of this wire which, it, which comes pre-stripped and exposed from the factory. So now, whenever the relay is not energized, this line has 120 volts AC on the exposed end of the conductor. So at the very least, you want to put a wire nut on that and tape it to make it safe. Or better yet, I, I changed the wiring. So now the hot comes in on this side and then goes to the motor. So when the relay is energized, this is closed, this is open. So you've got your current flow going this way. This contact's open, so there's no current flow here. Then when the relay turns off, this contact's open, so the, the voltage source is turned off at this point. So there's no current flow to the motor or to the blue wire. And just to be on the safe side, I went ahead and put a wire nut and tape on the end of this wire as well. Better safe than sorry. So I need to swap those two wires there. about it. I'm going to wire nut that one just to be safe. But let me put the power back on here. And I'll simply check it here and I know that now it's dead. I don't have the 120 on there anymore, so...
wire nut on it. 